Up next, we have Dr. Vontanopoulos, who is a professor of surgery at the Wake Forest University and a founding director of the Wake Forest Organoid Research Center, WForce. He completed his surgical residency at Baylor College in Houston, Texas, a surgical oncology fellowship at Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo, New York. He is a recognized expert and thought leader on peritoneal surface malignancies with NIH funded research, more than 180 publications, numerous podium presentations and book chapters. Please welcome Dr. Vontanopoulos. Hello everybody. Um, let me uh, give you our latest uh, update on the, our organoids and the personalized uh, therapy. Um, allow me to spend a few slides uh, so that uh, everybody can uh, be brought up to speed on uh, some uh, basic and, uh, uh, concepts. So what is a tumor organoid? The tumor organoid, how is it made, first of all? Uh, what, you see, what you see in the screen is uh, the first, uh, one of the first appendiceal cancers uh, organoids that we built back in 2016. The way you have to think in your mind of an organoid is nothing more than a dissociated piece of a tumor that is dropped within a hydrogel system. And uh, in 80% of the patients who have chemosensitivity results and immunosensitivity results in about five to 10 days. And how do these results look like? Uh, they look like exactly this. So on the one side, you have different uh, chemotherapy regimens or immunotherapy regimens. And uh, on the other side, you have residual viability of the tumor at the end of the treatment. If red is dead and green is alive cells, the best treatment here is the one at the bottom that leaves only 11.8% of the tumor alive. Can we perfuse an organoid? We absolutely can. We can perfuse an organoid exactly as we perfuse um, a patient doing HIPEC. We place the organoids in these uh, small wells at the center of the screen. Uh, we have inflow cannulas, outflow cannulas. There is a continuous uh, uh, flow through a peristaltic pump. And it is a very handy system because it allows us to uh, map the experiment on a uh, real uh, time. The big question was always, do we have clinical correlation? We know since uh, 2018 from uh, this paper that was published in Cell by Dr. Vlahoyanis that uh, the organoids were showing they had an 88% positive predictive value and they had a 100% negative predictive value. That means that, that when the organoid was responding the patient was to chemotherapy, the patient was responding 80%, 88% of the time. And when the organoid was not responding, the patient never responded. And this number is a very uh, uh, important number because it will allow us to find out what chemotherapy drug or what immunotherapy drug is not working for the patient. In this way, we can skip unnecessary toxicity and unnecessary talk, uh, cost. For example, on this slide, on the right side, you have a number of low-grade appendiceal cancers that were treated with chemotherapy and did not respond. And the same thing, same thing happened with the organoids. Can we select drugs for HIPEC? We absolutely can select drugs for HIPEC. Um, here on the green brackets, um, you see the impact of two hours of perfusion with mitomycin C uh, over one millimeter of uh, appendiceal cancer organoid. And what is left behind is 80% of the cells alive after two hours. On the other side, if you decide to perfuse the same tumor with the same organoid with uh, oxaliplatin at the regimen that was used in the protein Z7 trial, at least 50% of the tumor is staying alive. So we can clearly uh, identify what is a good drug for HIPEC and not what is a bad drug for HIPEC. Can we uh, identify if hyperthermia is working for all? Well, I can tell you right now that uh, uh, usually, not usually, the majority of cases, hyperthermia will potentiate the effect of chemotherapy, but there is a subgroup of patients, maybe about 50 to 10% that hyperthermia will just add nothing uh, because the drug, for example, mitomycin C is quite often effective uh, without HIT2. And maybe in the future, we can identify this subgroup and spare them for the, uh, from hyperthermia altogether. Can we customize both HIPEC and systemic chemotherapy? Yes, we can. On the left side, you see systemic concentrations for a low-grade appendiceal cancer. Oxaliplatin clearly is not a good choice. But when you take the same drug and you apply that drug in concentrations achieved by IP chemotherapy and hyperthermia, 
Oxal platin spontaneously becomes automatically becomes a very good uh, option for this individual uh, patient. What about immunotherapy? Can we identify a response to immunotherapy? Um, it seems that we can. Uh, the, what needs to be done in this case is we need to introduce an immune system, a patient matched immune system within the organoid. So we take immune elements from the uh, individual patient and we co-culture them with the tumor. And then we hit them with immunotherapy. Immunotherapy um, for appendiceal cancer works in less than 20% of the patients, at least at the organoid level. When it works, it really works well, uh, but it will be extremely beneficial if we can pinpoint exactly who uh, will be the patient that will benefit from immunotherapy and who is the patient that we should not be treated with that. Why the above are important? All of the above are important because uh, it will allow us to study questions like clonality, like what we in the past we were, we were calling as heterogeneity. And what is that? When the patient with carcinomatosis or with peritoneal surface disease um, has a good amount of tumor in the abdomen, then very rarely you have a single population of cells within this peritoneal cavity. And uh, this uh, slide here uh, depicts exactly that. These are tumors removed from the same patient during the same procedure from different areas within the abdominal cavity. And the patient had the tumor removed from the ovary, from the appendix, from the left hemi diaphragm, and from the liver capsule. Organoids grown from all of those were treated with the same conditions and the same drugs. And every tumor from each side we're responding to the same drug differently. So this is an extremely important concept. And I'm going to reinforce that idea with the following slide. This is the eight appendiceal cancer cell lines that were created from the same patient from the same lesion. So we took a piece of the tumor from the same patient. We processed it to create appendiceal cancer cell line, and we create eight of them out of the same lesion with different, different subclonal uh, variations within each one of them. So that gives you an idea of what's happening within an individual patient. That gives you an idea of how many different tumors were fighting at the same time. And this is something that will have to alarm us and it, it has to make us think slightly different. It's a time for a concept change because if we have that level of clonality within the same individual patient, and we have heterogeneity between different patients, a clinical trial that utilizes cohort analysis is just not enough. It will never be able to depict what is really happening within patients, maybe within a cohort, but we never will say what will happen within an individual patient with accuracy. And we need to design research tools to approach every individual patient separately. What we are working for and what we are hoping to achieve is to reach a point that we can map up front the tumor clonality for every individual patient that comes to the clinic. We need to be able to match available treatments to specific clonal subpopulations. And then we need to determine the treatment of choice, the duration of each treatment, and the sequence of different treatments. And I know that probably that sounds like a daunting task, but we need to do some reflection. And it's time for the reflection slide here. And I'd like to uh, remind you that, you know, quite often we overestimate what we can achieve within a year or two years. And we underestimate what we can achieve in five or 10 years. So here we are back in 2016. 2016 was when we first generated the first appendiceal cancer organoid. Five years later, we have generated organoid platforms to study response to systemic chemotherapy one, two, IP chemotherapy, three, immunotherapy, and four, hypothermia. We have an appendiceal cancer cell line, and we got two NCIR1 grants on peritoneal disease, and one of them is a totally dedicated on appendiceal cancer that NCI has never funded before. So things are moving, things are looking promising. Um, we are progressing fast and towards the right direction, but nothing of that could have been done without the support of all of you and the ACPMP. Uh, with that, I would like to acknowledge, you know, our patients and the families, our Wake Forest Cancer Center, the Surgical Oncology Division, the WFM, the ACPMP itself. The, I, I have to say that the 
Cancer Cell Alliance that we have created. It was totally funded by ACPMP. And uh, today uh, they are available for any researcher who wants to do classic um, research on epithelial cancer. The only thing they can do is they can email me and uh, we're gonna uh, forward the, the lines to them. With that, I will conclude and uh, I'm gonna be uh, waiting for your uh, questions. Thank you.